nature is a living whole. Alexander von Humboldt, the founding father of environmentalism, warned that humans had the power to upset the delicate balance of nature, a completely radical idea in the 1800s. Humboldt sparked the creation of the American conservation movement and inspired generations of artists, writers, and photographers whose work showed the importance of protecting some of the country's most precious natural resources. And the American public agreed. In 1864, Congress passed legislation protecting the Yosemite Valley and eventually created the National Park System in 1872. Following World War II, Americans began to see the problems when the environment was exploited for profit. This awareness led to an era of political action, but the government did not act quickly. It would take the publication of Rachel Carson's 1962 book, Silent Spring, to change the course of environmental history. Carson wrote about the effects of pesticides on animals, in particular DDT, on the American bald eagle. The book was an instant bestseller and inspired the modern environmental movement. The next five years saw rapid political action. Congress passed the Clean Air Act in 1963, the Water Quality Act in 1965, the first legislation regarding endangered species in 1966, and the Wild and Scenic Rivers Act and National Trails System Act in 1968. But it was not enough. It took a series of environmental catastrophes to attract even greater public attention to the hazards of chemicals and pollution. In 1969, pictures showing what seemed to be a fire on the heavily polluted Cuyahoga River in Ohio made headlines. The public outcry pressured President Richard Nixon, and in 1970, he proposed the establishment of the Environmental Protection Agency, known as the EPA, and a National Earth Day. Right away, the EPA asked for an expansion of the Clean Air Act, leading to life-saving reductions in air pollution. A new Clean Water Act aimed at increasing quality standards for the nation's waters. And the Endangered Species Act, strengthening protections for U.S. plants and animals. Then, two of the most appalling environmental tragedies in American history happened. A toxic chemical dump under a school and neighborhood in Love Canal, New York, started leaking and waste bubbled to the surface. Children suffered chemical burns on the school playground, and cancer and birth defects skyrocketed. The EPA discovered thousands of similar sites around the country, producing a national public health crisis right in the heart of America. Next, a meltdown of the Three Mile Island nuclear power plant in Middletown, Pennsylvania. Over 140,000 people were evacuated. Cleanup efforts took more than 10 years and citizens learned a new word, Superfund. In 1980, President Jimmy Carter signed the Superfund Act, giving the EPA the power to supervise the cleanup of these dangerous sites. Sadly, decades later, the situation isn't improving. Environmental destruction caused by humans continues to worsen. Public health emergencies concerning air pollution, contaminated drinking water, deforestation, groundwater depletion, wildfires, and oil spills are very common in today's headlines. Political partisanship continues to affect public attitudes toward the environment, and scientific evidence of climate change is challenged every day. Humboldt's once radical idea that humans have the power to upset the delicate balance of nature begs the question. Will citizens continue to demand policies that impact environmental change? And what collective actions can we, as citizens, take to preserve and protect our planet's most precious resources? <laughs>